Hello and welcome to another instructional video brought to you by ZappySys. In this video, we're going to cover how to use a custom ZappySys data gateway service to connect to an ODBC connection for an API source. You could use this for things like Excel, Power BI, Informatica, or even languages like C Sharp, Python, and more. The list of available API sources to use with the driver is always growing, so don't worry if yours isn't available at the moment because it might be added in the future. And in the meantime, be sure to check out the universal drivers for JSON, XML, and CSV, which can connect to virtually any API source in just a few steps. All right, let's get to it. So the first thing you're going to need to do is download the ZappySys ODBC Power Pack. You can get that straight from the ZappySys website, hovering over products, ODBC Power Pack, and download the free trial. Don't worry, I'll add a link for that in the description below. I've already downloaded it on my machine, so I'm going to just search for the Gateway Configuration Tool. And I'm going to allow it to make changes, and up pops the Configuration Tool. The first thing you'll want to do is hop over to the Users tab, and if you don't have any users created already, just add a login, make sure the password's the same, and you're going to need at least one administrator. I already have those two users, so I'm going to stick with those. And also be sure to go to the Network Settings tab and add a firewall rule so that other machines from the local network can reach the gateway on port 5000. There we go. Other than that, we'll just hop back over to the Data Sources tab and make a new data source. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to give it a name. We'll call it CS Gateway. And I'm going to use the ZappySys API driver. So the first thing you'll notice is four options. The first one is definitely the best and the easiest, and that's the one I'm going to use for this particular video. All you have to do is pick your API source from the drop down below, and the wizard will walk you through the remaining configuration for the API source. But suppose you don't see your source listed. You can use this option to search for it online. You can use the third option to specify a direct file path for a custom ODBC connector. Or you can use the XML option to add direct XML for your connector. Like I said, I'm just gonna keep it simple. And I'm gonna use the first option and I'm gonna pick OData. You may also notice up here you have a simple view and an advanced view option if you'd rather go through the configuration this way. I'm going to keep it simple and stick with the simple view. So I picked OData. I'm going to click Continue. And in this example, I'm just keeping it simple, like I said, and I'm going to stick with no authentication. But you may have certain uh, authentication needs for your particular API connection. Always, always, always refer to your specific API documentation for how you need to manage your settings. But again, I'm just using no authentication. Some connectors, such as Google Sheets, has this little link over here for steps to configure. And if you click that, it'll give you a little additional help. So that's something to be on the lookout for. I'm going to hop back over to OData. And I'm using no authentication, and I'm just going to use this sample API URL that's already popped up. And I'm going to click Test Connection. And there we have it. We have a successful connection. Awesome. But what data am I getting with this connection? Well, that's what the Preview tab is for. This little SQL editor is basically where you specify what data you want to retrieve from that OData source. So we can use this little drop down to pick all of the tables or endpoints available from that API URL. I'm just going to use the customers table. And now we see sample SQL already provided to get me columns from this table. So if I just click preview data, there we have it. That's the data that's going to be returned. But we don't have to just use only this SQL, or we could modify it. Let's say we don't want the address column. We want to give the company name column an alias. We can do that. 
and now we see the address is gone and we have this name. So we can do other things in this. You could add another table and do a join. Um, if you're not sure how to write that, you could use this little query builder tool over here to give you a little help. Or you can hop over to this examples tab and you can see actual examples for how to write certain SQL syntax to, let's say, update a table or set a column to something. Or you can search for functions like the min function if you want to know how to get the min value of something. That's really helpful. And you're not limited to just single SQL statements. You could write a complex stored procedure. You could do other things. So it's really powerful, really flexible. You can do a lot. But in this example, I'm just going to get this customer data from this customer table and I'm gonna say okay and there we have it that's how easy it is to create a connection using this custom Zappysys data gateway hopefully you see how easy and flexible it is okay so we've already covered how to create a gateway connection how to create a user account for the gateway how to make sure the firewall settings are configured and how to connect to an API data source now let's see how to use the data from this particular gateway in a report in SSRS. I already have a report services project in Visual Studio, so I'm just going to open that up. And I'll just create a new report. So I'm going to use the wizard and click Next. We'll call this data source name data source 1. That sounds good. Type SQL Server will edit the connection. So don't forget we used localhost on port 5000. We're using the SQL Server authentication and we're using the user we created in the gateway. And don't forget our gateway is called ZS Gateway. So we're going to test the connection. It works. Awesome. So we'll say OK. We'll say OK, we'll click Next, and we'll stick with our same customers table. We want a tabular report, and we'll use all the columns. We'll say Next, report name, report one, sure, we'll click Finish. And just like that, you see report one is created. We have our data source is created with the connection string. It looks good. So let's just preview the output of the report. And there we have it. There's the data from that API connection. We could refresh this. And don't forget, this is a live connection to that API. So every time we refresh it, we're getting brand new data. I mean, we could do some other configuration or cosmetic tweaks to this report, obviously, but it's ready for deployment if that's what you would want to do with it. I mean, that's it. That's how easy it is to retrieve data from an API source with the custom Zappysys gateway service and then use it in SSRS. If you want to give it a try, but you haven't already downloaded the ODBC Power Pack yet, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget the link is in the description below. And be sure to subscribe to the ZappySys YouTube channel to get more tips and tricks like this and other updates in the future.